All right, guys. John Maggio here. Very excited today to talk to you about uh, your networking funnel, what to do now that we don't have a lot of business cards to go through, how to get results from networking, how to be intentional. Um, you know, we've been to a lot of networking events and some of us can tell right away who's new and who's been here for a while uh, because a lot of the new people, you can see them coming from a mile away. For some reason, they think they're going to sell something today, <laughs> right? So, you know, uh, we're all here. There's 33 uh, of us in this room today. You know, who came here to sell something? All of us. Who came here to buy something? Not, none of us. So we know, none of us came here to go shopping today, guys. That's why selling directly at networking events rarely ever works. Uh, so hence the eight second commercial because we really have to have the one-on-one -on -one to make it really happen. And that's where we're gonna spend all of our time going through um, a conversation, a system to where we can find out what's wrong and offer a solution. People buy from the people they like and trust. You've heard that before. Well, the best way to gain trust is to listen. Listen and ask questions. The more people are sharing with you, the more they're actually breaking down and trusting you more. They're, they're letting their, their guard down, they're letting their walls down, they're letting you in their life more and more. Uh, again, the more that they're talking, the more they're letting you in and trusting you more. Now, the opposite is, tr is true. The more you're talking, you know, they've almost got to have to have a shield up sometimes to block how many words some of these people are giving to us in these presentations on uh, Zoom or in person. And what I'm talking about, of course, is the, a lot of the PowerPoint presentations. Let me give you guys a little acronym that I, I always have to use. It's WAIT. W-A-I-T. That stands for why am I talking? Why am I talking? The most important part of a one-on-one -on -one is to be quiet and listen, ask questions, try to encourage most of the talking to happen on the other side of the fence. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, when is the last time you've won a game of tennis with the ball on your side of the court? Never, right? So when they are talking, they respond to your question, ball comes back to you, knock it back to them, ask them another question. Ball comes back to you, knock it back to them, ask them another question. You know, so some of these questions you should have information about ahead of time, meaning you should be able to already answer these questions for yourself. For example, if I'm on a one-on-one -on -one and I've asked somebody, you know, how long they've worked, where they've worked, I should kind of already know that because I should have looked at their LinkedIn profile and taken a look at their career, seen their past job history, see where they've been moving in their career, et cetera. You know, these are um, critical points, critical conversations, because for example, what if we went to the same college together? What if we were alumni together? That creates a bond. Another place to look, of course, is Facebook. You can see a lot of information on Facebook as to maybe, do these, does this person have any pets? Does this person have any children? Do they have, are they a Ravens fan? Uh, in my case, do they go fishing? For me, if I know somebody goes fishing, I can immediately start talking about fishing and all of a sudden the conversation, you know, all the guards lower, all the barriers reduce. We've, you know, now we're talking about something that we have in common. We can share stories, we can share information, we can, you know, really, kind of get out of the business mode, get out of the sales mode for a minute and do some of that bonding and rapporting that we all need in our, our sales processes. You've got to really leverage that social media to get the answers to the questions that you're going to ask in your interview. I just want to, there's nothing wrong with pre-call planning. I know some people say, Oh my God, you looked at my Facebook. You, you don't go out and you don't say, hey, by the way, I just looked at your Facebook profile right before we met and guess what I saw? You know, so try to be a little courteous as people privacy. Uh, you know, you don't want to creep anybody out, but at the same time, this is important to do pre-call planning. It's beneficial for you and it's certainly beneficial for the call that you're, the, the person on your call. You know, that the ability to, to have a functional conversation 
uh, the ability to have a fluid conversation and the ability to actually get things done in a conversation, that's going to be better for everybody. And a lot of that's going to get done when you do your pre-call planning. It's going to go a lot smoother, I promise. I know we talked about getting off topic, but we need to make sure that we stick to the game plan. What is the game plan? Many of us here offer 5, 10, 15 different services. You know, 5, 10, 15 different services. So you can really overwhelm someone when you start talking about all of those different things that you can do. Uh, for example, if I, I'm a, a marketing person, so I do websites and I do emails and I do Facebook and I do pay-per-click and I do graphic design and I do this and I do that. And it's just very overwhelming, especially if I'm trying to do the features and benefits of those products and services, it can become a mind melt. Uh, Michelle, many of you know, Michelle and I own Hawk Marketing Services. Michelle and I also used to work at New Balance Shoes. Uh, what we did at New Balance Shoes is we never let anybody uh, try on more than three. The reason why is because after the third one, they became confused and couldn't remember what the first one felt like. You know, so we had to keep it to, you've heard the, the power of three, but we had to limit it to three. So remember, you might offer five, 10, 15 things. You really want to limit it to one, but after two or three, people really start to lose focus on, on your mission and your message. You want to find the one thing that's bothering that person in your questioning, and then you want to offer them that one solution that you can give them. That keeps it very clear. Get them in with the one thing, and then you can upsell and cross-sell later. But to try to get everything sold in one presentation, it often has a higher failure rate. That's why it's so important to do the pre-call planning, the questioning, then ask questions that, you know, to try to peel back layers as to what's bothering or what the problem is. And then again, circle back and offer that one solution, not the PowerPoint with, you know, every single thing your company can do for them. I was on a power one-on-one uh, -on -one the other day and they whipped out the PowerPoint. She wouldn't stop. I said, yes, I'm interested in the uh, one thing, the life insurance. And she wouldn't stop. She just kept going through. She said, okay, I'll be done in just a minute. She was actually telling me to, to pause my action of, of wanting more information so that she could finish four or five more slides. You know, don't get into that, that situation. Um, I don't think that it's really great for experienced networkers. We're certainly not here to buy. We're here to build relationships. Remember, it's the customer's choice. If I'm talking and I'm trying to sell, people aren't really buying. If they're talking and they're convincing themselves that they need my products and services, they're the ones that are actually making the decision. They're the ones that are reinforcing their, their options. They're the ones that are buying. If I'm talking, I'm selling. If they're talking, they're buying. You know, so again, 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time they're, they're answering questions and 20% of the time I'm asking questions. That's how the 80, 20 rule works here with the one-on-ones. And remember guys, Nobody's going to share anything with you in some loud public area or somewhere where there's traffic behind you, people are walking around, or if they think that somebody else can hear the conversation. I don't usually use the word intimate in business settings, but you need to make sure that the, the, the setting is private, people feel comfortable, and, and it needs to feel like they can share with you. So, you know, again, in a Zoom, make sure that your, your background isn't very distracting. There's not a lot of noise coming from other rooms. Make sure everything's quiet. Make sure they're not building a deck out back, obviously. Um, and just make sure that people feel comfortable, safe, and secure to share. Many times in person, we would break out of a networking event and there would be four, five, six one-on-ones happening in the same room. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really going to talk about financial services or insurance or health problems or any of that stuff if I think like four or five other people can hear me. So how am I going to, you know, really divulge my pain points if we're out here in public? So again, try to remember 
that you know that needs to be intimate it needs to be private and it needs to be safe a safe zone back when we were in person and we had business cards let me grab a few of these business cards hopefully when we were in person you collected all the business cards you could collect and you did something with these business cards what i did is i ended up typing in every single one of these cards and creating a database so that I can share with people when I have one-on-ones with them. I don't know why I have, I have them because it just, it represents like an accomplishment. You know, that's why I've kept the cards. So I, a lot of people ask, you know, complicated, do I need a a CRM to keep track of all my clients? Uh, Do I need to build this complicated pipeline? Well, in some cases, maybe that is the truth, but there's no excuse for not, having some sort of system, even when you don't have a CRM. And in that case, I use Microsoft uh, or Excel or Google Sheets. And let me tell you why I've dumbed it down to those basic programs. The reason is because you need to have a master area to have your master contact list. I can copy and paste this list and I can upload it into my, my MailChimp, the, my email marketing. I can copy and paste this list and I can upload it into my CRM. I can copy and paste this list and I can upload it to a third party uh, text messaging system. If I want to send everybody here a text message that, like I did for the summit. It just seems like at the end of the day, I'm constantly copying this list and pasting it up somewhere. That's why I start here and then upload it to different areas. I keep pointing to it like I'm gonna show it to you and I am gonna show it to you, I promise. In physical, we had five squares and we would stack all the cards in one stack here and we would run all the cards through the system and at the end we would have a result. Well, now we're virtual. In the physical, I fought a digital version because I worked well with this physical appearance of these cards that I was moving from one side to another. So I want to go through real quick and tell you guys what those are. Uh, The first one or the first action that you need to do with every single business contact chat that you get, that, you know, download this chat. Make sure that you have uh, registration information from every every event that you that you attend. There's no excuse not to, as Lee says, save the chat. It does take a few more minutes at the end to go down and find contact information of the one, two, or three people, but it's always going to be a good idea to continue to add to your to your list. Um, Remember, every time you send an email, for example, a few people will unsubscribe. So if you leave your list stagnant and you're not constantly building it, you're certainly, you know, you're going to end up with a deficit. Many of you have heard the story of Susan Wheatley, Just Show Up, 49 West Street. Like Susan, every person I meet, I commit to having a one-on-one with that person. So I reach out to them via email. And I don't just reach out and say what we often commonly see. Hey, I saw you at this networking event. I do websites. If you know anybody that needs any websites, you know, please keep me in mind. Uh, you know, if you need a website, let me know. You know, that's not the type of follow-up email that I'm talking about. And also, you know, why are you just blindly connecting with people on LinkedIn without sending a message as well? You know, I, I, right after a lot of networking event, I get these LinkedIn requests, but followed by nothing. So what I'd like you guys to do is be very intentional, reach out to every single person and in this networking event, you can skip a step. You can chat with them right now, or you can email them later, but reach out to people that you haven't met in this networking event and say, hey, it was nice meeting you today. Um, I like to get to know you have more, a little bit more, a little bit more about your business. Uh, hopefully we can trade business, maybe we'll become strategic partners. Here's my calendar link. Let's have a one-on-one. Blanket requests don't really work anymore. It's, uh, if, if you stand up and say, I, I like to have coffee with everybody, 
I'm open to having coffee. If anybody wants to have coffee, like you're not going to get any coffees. What I'm asking you to do is to look at the screen and see who is on the screen that you don't know and private message every single person and say, I want to have coffee with you. You need to be very intentional. If you ask for coffee, if, if I ask you, you're probably going to say yes. If I'm waiting for you to ask me, that's probably never going to happen. You, you see how that works? When I say I'm open to having coffee with anybody, that's basically me waiting for you to call me. Well, I must think very highly of myself if I think that you're going to call me, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that step and I'm going to be humble and I'm going to reach out to you because I want to move the needle here. I want to work my funnel and I want to get it going. Now, you might not always get a response right away. You might not get a response in the, in the private chat because the private chat could be busy. You might not get a response via email right away. Remember, a lot of people are doing a lot of networking events and they are uh, getting a lot of emails. So the second phase is waiting for a response. And in this phase, what I want you to do is I want you to just wait a few days. If you don't get a response within five days, I want you to intentionally send one more message out and say, hey, I'm really serious about getting together with you. I'd like to know more about your business. Let's have a one-on-one. -on -one. If they don't respond again within a few days, just go ahead and X them off the list and put them in the not interested pile. I know that you know there could have, should have, would have be, but there's so many people in networking right now, we don't have a lot of time to wait for people who don't wanna have one-on-ones. It's okay just to go ahead and put them right in the not interested pile. We're, uh, imagine we're working with a lot of pay dirt that's a term they use when they're, they're looking for gold. You know, we need to keep dumping dirt in the top and filtering out results. You know, so a result in this case is that they're not interested. Happy to cross them off the list. We need to get to the people that are most interested. That's the whole goal of this. It's like a, a, a game. We're hunting out and we're qualifying and unqualifying people, right? Now, They've responded to you. You've scheduled something. Just because you scheduled something, that would be the third, the third level, it doesn't mean it's actually gonna happen. In networking, one-on-ones come second to sales meetings and clients. So if something pops up and I have to serve a client or a client wants to meet with me, unfortunately, or maybe I have a sales opportunity, unfortunately, I might reschedule that one-on-one. That -on -one. And that's okay to do. And I think that everybody here in the room understands that because we all really do want to get sales and we're all on each other's team. So there might be some rescheduling, but there has to be some sort of protocol. If I reschedule once, that's great. If I reschedule twice and I don't show up the second time, not interested. You know, we don't have a lot of time to play back and forth. We've got plenty of people that we've just met. There's a huge list ahead of us that we need to have one-on-ones with. So if they, if they, again, reschedule once, that's great. If we schedule another meeting and they have to reschedule again, I have to, I have to move on, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the not interested list. I'm, you know, remember, I'm going to keep their email and send them an email on my email marketing later. So just not on any more one-on-one -on -one requests. You know, so let's get into that, that, that category, not interested. You know, not interested, again, we talked about people who um, didn't respect our schedule, people who didn't reply to our emails. You know, those people are, not, are on our not interested. But the last thing I want you to do is to meet somebody and immediately judge a book by its cover and say, not interested. Meaning, you know, you don't think that they're a, a customer, potential customer, so, you know, I'm not going to meet with them. Or you think that they already have a partner, so I'm not going to meet with them. You know, that's the worst thing you could possibly do. What you need to try to do is try to meet with everyone. You know, everyone who's out here networking intentionally could yield a result. Um, you know, just because I don't need a mortgage right now doesn't mean that I shouldn't meet with David Ratty. Uh, just because I'm not even thinking about buying a house right now doesn't mean that I shouldn't meet with David Ratty. 
heck, Dave might know a, a contractor or Dave might know someone that needs my services and needs my, my expertise. Um, thank God he has a, a wife in the marketing industry, right? So, <laughs> but, um, you know, there's no reason not to meet with a financial person knowing that you're not going to be putting your stocks and bonds with them. The biggest thing that we should do is try to expand our network, let people know who we are, get to know people, and, and really, nothing happens when you sit on the couch. All the magic happens when you take action, and meeting with people is taking action. I just can't say it any simpler than that. So the last category is met with. You know, you've, you've, by now you've had a one-on-one, -on -one, you've talked about their business, you made them the focus, you uh, spent 80% of the time listening to them and 20% of the time asking them questions, you know, and then at the end, you introduce what you do and, and how you could be a service to the community or a service to their network. You've created a stronger bond. You guys are going to see each other more often now. You're going to remember your conversations. And, you know, it's just going to blossom from there. After you've met with them, make sure that you've, you know, start creating a referral, like a, uh, how would you say, a strategic partnership with some of your uh, members of your networking group. Referral source. I didn't type in all those cards for nothing. When I meet with people, I ask them, what type of companies can I connect you with? If they say contractor, I'm sending them a dozen contractors. And not only sending them a dozen contractors, but I'm telling people, listen, if you need me to send an email to introduce you to these contractors, let me know. If you can tell all these contractors, I said, John said, give me a call, you know, it might be a good uh, connection. You can use my name. So you have to be a resource out here while you're networking. Just because I'm not gonna get to sell somebody a website today on this one-on-one -on -one doesn't mean my job is done. My job includes helping everybody with any type of information they need with marketing or networking, listening to any questions they have. My job includes connecting people with other people in my network. Uh, if I don't, really give you know one or two contacts out i've kind of failed in my mission in this one-on-one -on -one. i'm not really giving any value at all you know so the biggest value you can do is refer people to other people even if it's just for one-on-ones even if it's just for one-on-ones i mean when people are the beginning in their in their sales process or they're having a hard time i ask them to have a one-on-one -on -one with lee not necessarily thinking that they're going to sign up with lee but to know that Lee will listen to them and, and, and give them a nugget or two, you know, and they'll be a little bit better off. So again, you need to be a resource. You need to make sure um, to connect people with other people in your network. Now, after that, you need to make sure that you need to stay in connection. So what do I mean by that? You've met with the people, you've had your one-on-one. -on -one. Now you need to make sure that your friends on Facebook, you need to make sure that you're connected on LinkedIn. You need to make sure that their email is now a part of your email list and that you're sending them your newsletter every month. And I'm not talking about that newsletter that has something on sale. I'm talking about that newsletter that actually offers something that they want to read, that they want to know more about. And we can't sell people anymore, guys. We've got to have more uh, tact than that. So you've completed your sales funnel and there should be a result. Typically, every 10 to 15 one-on-ones that you have, you should end up with at least a lead, a referral, and possibly a sale. The biggest part of the workshop today is to tell you that you need to measure this activity. How many one-on-ones does it take for something to happen. Uh, Lee Crumball said that he had 60 one-on-ones and he was able to sign up 15 people. You know, he's got a great price point. He's got a great product. Joan Huke, another person who can probably tell you on the back of her hand how many times, how many meetings it takes for her to sign up somebody for Legal Shield. Great price point, you know, very good for networking. Some of other of us have a little harder time, but that's okay, meaning if 
financial services. It might take you 25, it might take you 30 people in financial services to um, get it to the point where they're you know, letting you take care of their, their money. So it needs to be measurable. There has to be a result. And if you're not getting a result, something's going, something's wrong. There might be a price point problem. There might be a presentation problem. You know, there might be a product problem. Something's going on if you're not getting, I would say, at least 4%, you know, meaning one out of 25. After 25, you've got to measure, so you've got to go back and adjust something, I think. So keep your track of your goals, keep track of your targeting, and keep track of how many one-on-ones it takes. Because once you know that, then you know how many networking events you have to attend, how many meetings you have to book, and you can actually have a measurable result. You know, when I, when you say that you're going to sell this many things a month, how are you going to do that? How many meetings are you going to have to do that? How many meetings have you already had? How many people are in your pipeline? You know, everything is mathematics and sales. Everything is mathematics and sales, and you have to know your numbers. So, guys, thank you very much. I want to show you guys real quick my screen. Nothing complicated. There we go. So I'm using Google Sheets here. You can say you can see the first column is scheduled, not interested, met with, need a one-on-one, -on -one, waiting for a response. You can see I put a number in front of the um, the words. So it says one. Well, step one, need a one-on-one. -on -one. The reason why is so that I can uh, categorize these by alphabetical order and just see where each person is in this step, you know? So this is one way that you could keep track of your sales funnel and try to work people through your one-on-ones. You can use other programs like Trello. Uh, there are certainly other task management programs that you can use to create lists. Uh, but again, a lot of times I just start with the bare bones program, Microsoft Excel, or Google Sheets, I make sure that I have uh, all the information in. If, if, if I can get the address, I put the address. If I can get the zip code, I put the zip code. I always categorize the type of um, industry that they're in. Always categorize the type of industry they're in. That's because I have another sheet over here that actually has every single person that I've ever typed in. Thousands and thousands of people in a I've got coaches and contractors and events and catering and financial advisors and government officials, people who are in health and wellness, insurance. If you guys ever need contacts, you need some warm introductions, schedule one-on-one -on -one with me, guys, because I've got the resource. I want to hook you up with contacts. I want to see your business grow, and I want to see your networking grow. With that, thank you all very much for joining me today and talking about um, my chapter of the book, Success with Local Marketing, Growing Your Networking Funnel. I do wanna let you know that everything is on my website, hawkmarketingservices.com, everything we've talked about today. I was kind of scrolling through the website. You can see that we've included every chapter of the book on the right-hand side there, and we've color-coded them with the logo, or the colors of the Hawk logo. Um, so again, Visit the website if you want some notes. We'll have a video up there shortly. If you guys ever need any networking advice, visit the website. We've got a lot of great information here. Dozens of posts with dozens of workshops in there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen sharing and um, open the floor for any comments. What do you think, Lee? Be intentional? Yeah, uh, John, I was glad at the end you, you put in the part about uh, connecting the people that you're doing one-on-ones with with other folks that you think could be helpful to them or they could be helpful to. Uh, you know, that's a best best practice. And the way I do it is is connection emails to both pe people, because I think that's most personal. And you can give them a little bit of the background of the other person. Um, there's research that shows that uh, uh, the more you connect people from other networks that you're part of, uh, the greater value you're, you're gonna be as a networker. And actually, I'll read you a quote here. 
if you're a network broker, that's connecting people across your networks, on average, they are 50% more successful than those who do not engage in brokering, but just interact with individuals like themselves. So for what it's worth, what we're trying to do, there's research to show that it is the road to be more successful. Absolutely. Um, not to give another plug, but there's a chapter on the website called Asking for Warm Introductions. Uh, Chuck McDonald's mentioned in this blog post, but there's a template. Here's a, you know, what not to send, what to send. And, you know, what we encourage people to do is, you know, if you want me to give you a warm introduction, write a little something for me, and then I can use it as a template possibly, and then touch it up a little bit and send it along. You don't want to leave anybody with too much homework, right, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be talking about um, leveraging the warm referrals and asking for warm referrals in another week. Pablo, what do you think? Um, well, you were, uh, during the presentation, you were talking about this sheet that you shared with us a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I happen to have the PDF, so it's loaded on the chat. Oh, so if you. anybody want to do that, not that we're collecting a whole bunch of uh, business cards, but for those cards that you've forgotten about, maybe you want to run them through here again Yeah. and run them through this process, right? I still got a little stack. Yeah. This is the last of the, the last of the pandemic stack. There you go. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Pablo. Um, uh, you know, the only thing I was going to add to what you said is, is definitely have a tracking mechanism and use what works for you. Because let me tell you, you can go down a rabbit hole trying to find what other people are saying has worked for them. Find something that works for you, whatever it is, whether it's a sheet like this, whether it's a spreadsheet like John's or maybe pen to paper, find something that works for you. you but the most important thing is you have to, have to, have to track it. You can't be doing all this networking and not getting a result. You can't you measure it. Else. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if it's not networking, maybe you have to cold call. Maybe you have to send a mailer. Maybe you have to you know, do something, other activity, but uh, you have to do activities that bring in the bacon, right? Yep. Katie, did you have a comment, Katie Millie? Oh, I did. Yeah, I was, I was surprised to be called on, sorry. Because, uh, sorry, my, my constant struggle with this type of marketing is it can be endless. And, and, and not even that, but that um, sometimes you run into the same types of people over and over again, which is the same industry. Um, they do the same things. And at that point, I tend to struggle with figuring out how to strategize properly because I'm not sure one-on-ones with absolutely everyone works because there's a lot of times if I know that I've met five people like you, even though I'm actively trying to focus on referring other people, if I meet five financial advisors, it's most likely I'll only recommend two of them. I just can't manage all five <laughs> in, in, in my head or in my contacts. Um, so that kind of thing. So I'm wondering if there's a little bit more specifics in that. And there's only a couple industries where that's kind of the case. Um, MLMs, the housing market, um, Insurance, definitely insurance. <laughs> you just have to be able to leverage the conversation. For you know, you again. I'm going to meet with every financial advisor that I that I run across. I don't even have any money to invest, right, Pablo? I <laughs> I don't even have any money to invest right now uh, in that way. But I know that they know contractors. Pablo is getting his house built for God's sakes right now. Like I know he, like he, he can connect me with the contractor that's building his house, you know, and you're looking for, um, the, you know, people in the design industry or in the art industry business, everybody knows a marketing company. And, you know, if, if at the very minimum, you got to leverage that conversation to, to get that referral, that warm introduction, Samir. Uh, Sorry, John, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to uh, say thank you for uh, a wonderful presentation. I just wanted to uh, highlight a few of the key takeaways from what you uh, talked about. I think the, one of the, you know, the 
top things you said was that, you know, uh, when you talked about the 12 touch points, that is so critical. Uh, I think sometimes we forget that. Uh, even if you're not networking, it, it, it takes a few touch points to get the other person ready to buy from you. And networking is a great example of that. Secondly, you mentioned uh, uh, that one has to look at their service. Maybe your uh, price is uh, not at an optimum level. Uh, maybe you are uh, talking to the wrong uh, bunch of folks, or maybe you're trying to sell cat food to a dog person. Uh, so that is very critical. I was very happy that you mentioned that. And uh, lastly, and I think maybe it'll help uh, Caddy. I think what you talked about today is, is, a, is a system of having the method to this madness. Um, and that is what I've seen in my experience uh, with a lot of business owners. They launch a business, they grow it to a certain extent, but they cannot, uh, they, they struggle to uh, scale it. And one of the top reasons is uh, that a system is not in place. Either use an Excel sheet or one of those fancy CRM tools out there, um, but having a system is a must. So thank you so much, John, for refreshing our memories. Let me refine the, 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 the idea a little bit by yeah. saying, I think what I more mean is I feel uncomfortable meeting with people. I am not positive I can help, if that makes sense. Because I feel like then I feel like I'm using them for the conversation, which means they, I may be able to get something out of them, but they may not be able to get something out of me. And that I don't like to arrange meetings because I feel like it ends in kind of an awkward tone when that's the case. And so I want to make sure I'm like, I'm prepared to find referrals for this person. I'm prepared to help in some way. I'm prepared to take time on social media to share their stuff. I think that's really what I more think about. And that's understandable. That's understandable, Katie. I mean, you definitely want to be a resource and it get get overwhelming, but it would be unfortunate to not have a meeting with somebody and to miss an opportunity. You know, and that's just another way to look at it. You know, a lot of times when we we're in the, in the physical, I did not want to go to the happy hour. I did not want to go to the event. I, I could have, I made up excuses, you know, just similar, maybe similar like, well, you know, I don't really have any time right now to give referrals. I really don't have, I should be doing work, et cetera. But almost every time I went out there, the magic happened. And I can promise you that, when you get on the call and it's not all about business, it can be worthwhile and constructive. Um, and it could be a good use of people's time. It's even if it's just to take a break from the, the madness that they're dealing with in real life, you know, and with your blue hair, <laughs> I know you could change the shade of the day for anybody, right? <laughs> John, can hey, I just John. Quick, quickly add something to, uh, this, I think, uh, and, I, I, and I sent you a message also, Caddy, that my 10-year-old daughter, she's going to love your hair when I sh uh, you know, show her your uh, picture. Just to add to uh, John, I think this is one of the dilemmas that we, I think, I have faced personally that occasionally we, we feel that what I'm offering is of no value to the person I'm meeting, and that is okay. Having said that, I think it what you're offering might not be uh, of value to that person immediately, but they know someone who can uh, benefit from it. And I've always thought of that. Uh, the way John has built this huge network, you know, uh, he's getting something out of it. And uh, a lot of other people are getting a lot out of it. So imagine uh, that. And just to close on this, I actually, when I was building my networking group, I met someone and, you know, John talked about listening, man, my listening skills in that meeting were put to the test. I had to sit there and listen to this lady for one hour. In the end, she, she didn't even buy anything from me, but she connected me with two people who became part of my networking uh, group and they're still there. Um, I'm sorry, Samar, I like to talk, okay? I don't know what to tell I you. I'm sorry. God, I knew it was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So. That's it. That's it for me. Kat. How about Samara? How about when they say, "Oh, I didn't even get to hear what you had to, to what you sell." We'll have to schedule another one-on-one. -on -one. That's fine. <laughs> but you did a good job. And remember, no good relationships end with one meeting. Uh, 
I think everybody has an opportunity to, to really get anybody as a customer if they want. If, you know, if, for example, we went back to financial advisors, if we just had one one-on-one -on -one and left it at that, probably nothing's going to happen. But, you know, if they join a group with me and then, they, you know, we see each other out and then they have conversations with me or maybe even try to befriend me or, you know, we develop actual personal relationship, that might have required more than one touch. That might have required 12 touches, you know, it, for me to feel 100% comfortable with that relationship. So there's going to be a lot of financial advisors that just meet with you once and we're done. Hey, but, John, if I can for a brief second. Go ahead. Um, you know, on that topic, you know, if you want to talk about financial advisors, not all financial advisors do exactly the same thing either. That's true. But to kind of switch it a little bit, you know, there are a lot of content and copywriters out there. I actually met four of them before I met Kat. And, you know, who needs four content writers? But the good thing is, is Kat and I met, Kat and I hit it off like so well from the start. And Kat is a fantastic content and copywriter. Kat's now my go-to, you know. But had I said, I've got four content and copywriters, I don't need to meet Kat, I'd have missed out on that opportunity. Yeah. You know, so, just, and, you, you know, know, the same, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, but the same can be said for financial advisors, That's you know. Sure. So, I mean, you just, no, you may not immediately have referrals for somebody, but, you know, that next financial advisor you meet might be the one that's just like absolutely incredible, mm -hmm. you know, and if you say, well, I'm not going to meet with him because I've got five financial advisors in my back pocket, then, you know, you may have missed out on that opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. and, so. and Katie, we're totally not picking on you. We're just really expanding your your example. I promise. No, yeah, no, it's it's good because I totally know probably ninety percent of my problem is a is a mindset thing, and it's more of just I'm so overwhelmed with I want to help everyone, and I feel bad if I fail someone. So yeah. then I just start getting into this rut, and I think I've, that's been happening in all of my networking, in that I can't help everyone, so I should not ask anyone anything. And then just because I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> and so I think I, because of that, I've just been starting justifying different excuses. I, I, will, I mean, like, honestly, I, I like it. to meet with you, Katie, because I need to know where my barometer is. You know, how much should I be paying for bookkeeping? I like to meet with four or five bookkeepers and see what they're charging, make sure I'm not even getting ripped off. Kurt, I love your, you've taken it to the fourth dimension. You know, good relationships don't uh, end on the first date and rarely do you marry the first person you date, you know, so you've got to go on a couple of dates, a couple of different people to really get to know your, your, who you're going to work with the best before, you know, so great reason to meet with more and more people from the same industries, great people, great reasons to meet more often with the same people. Cat Harvey. I just want to say Dave is trying to say something. Dave Hedrick is trying to say something. Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Pre appreciate it. Dave, we're talking um, about financial no, advice. I think what you, you were saying is we do a lot in our, what we call the fires found four deep because it may not be the person that, that, you know, that one-on-one, -on -one, but John, you may introduce me to Katie and Katie may, may make an introduction to Kurt. You know, Kurt and I, we've developed a relationship. Kurt, how, I can't tell you how many different one-on-ones we've had just as friends and just talking back and forth. Um, so, you know, it's have those one-on-ones because, you know, something, and John, you mentioned it earlier, there's going to be a nugget that you're going to find. And like I said, it doesn't have to take an hour. It can be 15 minutes and just get to know somebody because you're going to connect with them later on because a lot of us have seen each other through the link events and other different events around the area. So always be open to that 15 minute. It doesn't have to drag out. We're all busy, but creating that relationship and finding, you know, similarities to where we can help each other. And that's one of the first things we ask when we have a one-on-one -on -one is who can I introduce you to? And, um, you know, I've got this strange lady put, coming in. I, the back. <laughs> I was going to add to it and just say, don't forget, there's, um, there's a lot of value in meeting with people who are in the same industry that you're in. There's always something you can learn. And there are places where in the financial industry is a great example where 
Um, people only do certain sides of that industry. And so that connection with someone else who's in that industry allows you to refer the piece that you can't do over to someone and back the other way. So always knowing both sides of that is, is a great way to connect with people. Yeah, you're right yeah, about that. It's, I agree with that. A lot of um, I started, oh, go ahead, John. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I started a uh, pet business owners of Anne Arundel County Facebook group um, and have gotten really great results from that. A lot of feedback. Um, Got to still invite some more people. Facebook is not making that easy. But uh, as we're growing, um, I had a friend who asked me if I did um, a service that I don't offer um, like uh, overnight with a dog and so I was able just to go to my group and see who did and uh, sent her that information and made that connection between my friend and this other business owner um, so yeah I totally believe in the power of networking not with just other business owners but people in the same industry absolutely every marketing company I've run across I meet with them I tell you we all do it a little different and I'm guaranteeing that everybody here, if they're in the same industry as somebody else, I bet we all do it a little different. Uh, so it's super important to meet with people. In fact, you know, Sharon, you, you had a great idea of creating a mastermind group. That's what we would call that of, of people in the pet industry. And, you know, no secret, Kurt and I and a few other people are talking about doing a mastermind group for marketing. You know, there's no reason that we shouldn't all rise. Uh, all boats rise with the with the high tide, right? Something like that. Guys, we're getting we're running uh, 15 minutes after. We've we've only got 19 people left. <laughs> I think we should. They're dropping like flies. Road. <laughs> Thank you all very much for uh, tuning in today. Bye, everybody. We'll see hey, you guys. Bye, everybody. Today. Save the chat. The conversation. Save the chat. Super. Thanks. important. Everyone, have a great day. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks, John. Thank you. See everyone later. Take care, Peace guys. Peace. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, John.